Welcome everyone to week five's lab session for writing Wikipedia articles. Uh, I see we've got a pretty small group trickling in here. Um, I guess everyone else is busy writing their articles, so hopefully we'll see some more joining us periodically. Um, before we get started, I want to be sure to introduce Ben, uh, otherwise known as Go Frightens on Wikipedia. Uh, ben is a Wikipedia ambassador, which is uh, actually this is a a program that I helped initiate uh, through the Wikimedia Foundation um, which is basically a way for experienced Wikipedians to uh, to help out professors usually in a traditional university context who want to offer Wikipedia uh, writing assignments as part of their curriculum uh, typically having their students write a Wikipedia article instead of writing a traditional term paper and uh, so Ben uh, has been a Wikipedian for a couple of years and has recently gone through uh, the, the process of becoming a Wikipedia ambassador. And he saw our course as he was looking through the list of courses that didn't have ambassadors and decided to jump in and help out. So you may recognize his name. He did join us in the last session. Uh, and he's also been jumping in to answer some questions on the, uh, on the class talk page. But uh, I just wanted to be sure and give him a proper introduction uh, now that we have him with us for this lab session. So as we as we go forward, I'm going to uh, encourage him to jump in and answer questions, really just as, as you're all encouraged to help me answer questions. Uh, the further we get into the course, um, the more people there generally are on these calls who know the answer to each other's questions. So uh, anytime anyone feels that they know the answer to something, please feel free to pipe up. Um, it doesn't always need to be be me answering, and hopefully Ben will be uh, a good resource in helping out with that. As has Christine, which I should, I, I don't, Christine, I don't think I've uh, thanked you recently for your contributions, but uh, if anyone doesn't remember, uh, Christine is going through the course for her second time, and I'm sure you've noticed she's been very helpful in answering questions along the way. So very appreciative of both of your help. And uh, and let's just jump right in. I'm sure Cami and Clem and uh, and probably Christine have been working on articles and generating questions or ideas. So uh, so please feel free to throw them our way. Uh, and as always in the lab sessions, feel free to use your microphone if you like. Uh, you don't have to, but uh, it's it's kind of nice to have a a verbal discussion when we have the opportunity. Welcome, EJ. So, uh, so I just, EJ, I just uh, threw this open for questions or comments. Uh, and we've got a pretty small group today, so I think uh, what might be the best thing to do is start off just looking at uh, at the articles that everyone's working on and and seeing each other's progress. Um, I'm going to just jump into the browser here. And EJ says um, that uh, they have a question. Yes, OK. Go right ahead. Yes, Philanop says Herigothica. OK, so let's take a look. And um, I, I hate to interrupt, Pete, um, but uh, I got an email this week. And perhaps you would want to mention that um, I assume Sarah is not with us tonight because she's en route to Berlin. Oh, that's correct. Yes, I, uh, I'm, I should have mentioned that. Thank you. Yes, uh, Sarah's traveling, and so she's not going to be with us tonight. But um, I think with Christine and Ben here, I think we will be well covered. Thank you for reminding me. I'm so busy trying to uh, trying to remember all the little things that Sarah does to uh, to get us started. I didn't even think to acknowledge that. So, uh, so here's here's the article, and I see you have added a new citation. Uh, this citation number two, I don't remember seeing before, so that's excellent. Um, but when you cite a book that's an ebook, ebook, do you use the web template or the cite book template? So, um, I would generally cite the, e the use the cite book template. Either one will work, and they'll result in very similar formatting. Um, but uh, in this, well, I don't know if this is the one that you're talking about or not, but the fact that it has an ISBN number 
um, I think is a is a good reason to use the site book template because I don't think that there's a field for that in um, in the site web template. Let's just see what you did. So here, yeah, so you did use site book. And this is just great. Um, so when when you entered this, EJ, did you um did you use the trick that we've looked at a couple of times where you can enter the ISBN number and sometimes pull in the information? Oh, I see. The date published. So okay. So I'm gonna just I'm gonna just show that one uh briefly again, just um uh, so everyone remembers it, just because I think this one is so useful when you're citing a book. Uh if you click on this site drop down menu, it gives you this field called templates. If you click on that and choose site book and enter something in the ISBN field, um, whoops, I need to enter an actual ISBN number, which I thought I had copied. Um, let's see. Okay. And then you hit the search little magnifying glass, it will consult an online database and fill in as many fields as it knows how to. Um, and in this case, it's pulled in. As you're asking about the date published, I see it's pulled in 2004. Um, I don't know if that's the best answer or not, but let's just cancel out of that and go back to the article. And let's just click on the ebook and see what it has to say about the publication date. Uh, so, Google Books is a little bit of a funky site to navigate around. Um, there is a, so you are looking at the actual book itself here, but there is a place, um, where is it? I feel like they've moved this around. There's a, uh, there's a, a book page that has typically the, the bibliographic information on it. Well, I'm not seeing it, but then there's also, if you go to the front of the book, I, I would consult the um, this. Uh, I'm forgetting the formal name for this page, but uh, this here I see copyright 2005, Wiley Publishing. Uh, on the it's not the title page. It's the uh, oh yeah, uh, Worldcat.org is another is an excellent site for this. Um, but so just looking at this, I would think that 2005 is the right answer to um, to what to use in the article. In the citation, um, so WorldCat, yes, is an excellent site for looking up bibliographic information. Uh, I'm going to just pull that up in the browser real quick as well. Um, and oh, I guess I really should grab that ISBN number again. Actually, this is so. Here's another thing in the in the Wikipedia citation. If you click on the ISBN number, it's going to give you a list of many different Databases uh, that that book's entry in many databases. Um, let's see. Do I have to click go here to actually get there? No. And then I think WorldCat is going to be is going to be one of these. Yeah, there we go. So find this book at WorldCat. So this is going to take us directly to the WorldCat entry. And WorldCat is from OCLC, which is. Um, which is the organization? I think I think the most famous thing that OCLB does, C does. Uh, Christine, correct me if I'm wrong, but is the um, the uh, this th this is basically the database that supports interlibrary loan and things like that. So if you've ever been on your library's website and looked up a book um, and found that it exists in other libraries and uh, and you know so that you can order it in one place and have it delivered. To your library, uh, that's OCLC's WorldCat is the the database that supports all of that. Did I get that about right, Christine? Yes, you did. I, I would give you an okay. an, an, uh, uh, an A minus. <laughs> all right. Any you, you want to fill in where I got the minus? Is it just the, the mumbling and stammering? No, no, no. <laughs> your delivery is excellent. Um, it's um, the interlibrary loan references what's known as the Union Catalog which is um, a really fascinating beast of information. It's um, back back in the day, 
every library would keep its own, you know, card catalog or database of books in its possession. And then as the computer age started getting underway, um, they realized that they were duplicating a lot of effort. And so they, uh, OCLC and uh, the, the library community developed this thing called the Union Catalog, where uh, there was a, a centralized depository of bibliographic information that uh, libraries could then just simply uh, customize for their own use instead of you know everybody duplicating the same books over and over again and it's it's that database which enables things like the interlibrary loan okay great. well thank you very much it's great to great to have an expert on that on the call um, so Clem you're asking does this also cover for journal articles, and I, I assume you're asking about that little trick with the um, with the ISBN number. Um, it it does not. Uh, journal articles have I think it's an ISSN number that w that's a unique identifier for journal articles. But as far as I know, there's no similar trick on Wikipedia to pull in the information. Uh, if anyone knows, oh, WorldCat, um, Christine, you may know better than than me. I don't know how WorldCat handles. Academic journals. Um, to my, in my experience, I don't think they do because they don't. I, 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 they, they. You may be able to. Let's see. No, I, I don't think they, they deal with journals. I think they're just books. Okay. Uh, so EJ, I see. I didn't, I didn't quite get at your, uh, your specific question. So I think I'm going to just have to beg off on this. Uh, I, I really don't know uh, what the exact correct answer is to this. Um, I, I understand if it was published originally in print and then republished as a Google ebook. Um, you know, I, I would tend to think that if it was a straight republication, I would list the earliest date. If it was something that was updated and modified, then I would list the, the more recent date. Uh, but it's really, it's a judgment call, and I think your judgment on that is probably as good as mine. Uh, but uh, I would like to say uh, congratulations for adding a, a new independent citation to the article. Um, and uh, is there is there anything else you wanted to look at on this article as long as we're here? Or should we move on and look at someone else's? Anything you've maybe been considering you want to add and want to discuss some ideas? <laughs> Break out the champagne. <laughs> Pete, something I might underscore is the importance of um, of getting um, your article linked to other Wikipedia articles. Yes. Okay. So that's something. Maybe your um, I, I know this came up recently on Open Educational Practices and Clem. I believe that's an article you've been working on, right? Yeah. Um, so why don't we why don't we jump over to that and look at the comment you left there? So, so Clem has recently. Oh wow, you've been you've been at work even since what I saw this morning. This is great. So this article, uh, if you haven't looked at it, I believe was only about this long. Uh, I think this is the text that was there, uh, or at least about the same quantity of text as was there before. And um, Clem and several others have been uh, really active on the talk page, uh, reviewing the article and assembling possible sources to expand it. Uh, and then just more recently have added this definition section and this OE, OEP areas section. Uh, so this looks really good. Um, and then I, what we're going to see on the talk page, uh, the most recent thing on the talk page, I believe, is this, uh, this question about the article being an orphan. So there's this line here that says this article is an orphan as no other articles link to it. Uh, and you can always tell, before, before we get over there to the talk page, we'll, we'll look at that in a section, but uh, you might wonder how someone noticed that the article is an orphan. Uh, and that is because on any, every Wikipedia article, there's always this what links here link in the left-hand nav navigation. And that will list all the different places on Wikipedia that link to that article. And then it's also, it's one, when you look at this, you'll see there are pages from several different namespaces 
linking in. So this seems kind of strange. It says no, there are no articles that link here, but here are like 10 or 12 entries. So why is that? Well, if we narrow it down to just the Wikipedia articles that link to it, um, we'll see there are only two links. So there's OEP, and that really doesn't count as far as uh, something link because it's not linking to it in a substantive way. It's not putting it in context. All it's doing is disambiguating uh, the acronym OEP. All it's doing is listing the many different things that that can refer to. Uh, and then there is this link from Open Educational Resources. And this may be, I think this is a new link. I think even the OER article didn't link to OEP until recently. But um, typically, people will add that tag uh, even if there are one or two links if an article isn't, isn't linked by very many places in Wikipedia. So, Clem had asked on the talk page down at the bottom here about orphan status. So let's just all take a moment to, to read that comment. And Ben, I see you have some comments. So if you, if you want to jump in and talk about this, I'd be happy for the breather and I could catch up on maybe some things I've missed in the chat. Can someone just raise your hand if you hear what I'm saying so I don't know I'm not talking to myself? <laughs> All right. Um, so yeah, I was just going to say the hardest part as far as linking articles is not getting, um, or it's not linking to other articles, it's getting links into yours. So you have to find some applicable, applicable topics that would come in. So when we're talking about open educational practices, that's going to probably be a little bit easier than the uh, ORCID, or, ORCID um, article we were looking at earlier, only because if you look at, and I guess I can backtrack here a little bit, um, we have what are called categories, and I'm sure you probably spent some time on them, and in the category of list of ORCIDs, there are a ton of articles. So when you're just on an article about ORCIDs in general, you're probably not going to link to the specific species we were talking about, but when we're talking about um, open educational practices, there are probably some places elsewhere in Wikipedia that would uh, be relevant to link in. So, um, I see that Pete's sharing or doing some stuff on the screen to underscore what I'm saying, but I'm not necessarily sure exactly where we'd be looking to link in, but Orphan status, the hard part with orphan status is people, when you're reading about one thing, you jump to another thing, and an orphan, you don't, you'll never jump to that article, so it's less likely someone will read it. So yes, I see EJ, the orphan issue has to do with links coming into an article or going out, it has to do with links coming in to an article. Um, it's, as Pete said, in the what, when you click what links here, um, you'll see everything that links here, and you're looking for items in the article namespace that come into your article. And as we can see here, only open educational resources, and I just double check that, it has one link coming in. So that's the only where in the entire Wikipedia that links the article open educational practices. And if you want your article to be more read, the uh, goal would be to find other articles where it would be applicable to link it. So that's enough rambling about. Link. So let's let's take a look at the OER article and see where that link is, if we can find it to OEP. So I'm going to just do a find in the page here for practices. And I see the word there, but that's not linked. It's interesting. I see the word in, so, in several places that are not linked. And then down here, we do have it finally linked. So that's actually an interesting thing in itself. It is. It does seem that the concept is well covered in the OER article, but it might be worthwhile to link it in the first place that it's mentioned. And then in this, the place where it actually is linked, um, this is within the paragraph about OER Commons, which is is fine. It's not a problem, but it's um, if if someone is interested in open educational practices and they're just skimming through the article, they may skip this paragraph entirely. So they may, you know, they might, that might not seem like the thing that's of the most interest to them. They may be, you know, sort of more looking at things like institutional support, OER policy, and if they don't see a link to the Open Educational Practices article there, they might think that Wikipedia doesn't have one. So this would actually be, you know, if anyone, uh, just while you're 
you know, during the call t uh, today, if you feel like logging in and uh, doing a little bit of cleanup and organizing around where it's linked, uh, that might be a good little exercise. And um, if I can jump in real quick here. Generally speaking, when we're linking in articles, we link to the first mention of the article. If that comes in the lead, in the lead section, we link it there and the first time it appears within the body of the article. So usually we don't, if we're talk, if you have an article or a section in OER about open educational practice, you wouldn't link it every time the word appears. You would link it the first time. Right. Sort of like the acronym rule in that sense. Exactly, yes. So you might say, like, uh, you might another thing that we might do would be to to say uh, you know if if this said the full phrase open educational practices we we might put OEP in parentheses and after that in the article we might just refer to it as OEP very very similar and there's there's some judgment involved in that where if it's if something is a major concept and it's it's uh, mentioned several times in a long article. Uh, in different sections, uh, it might be more important to make sure that there's a link to it in each section. And if something is sort of only tangentially related to the topic, like if it's a software company and it's based in San Francisco, if the if San Francisco just happens to come up a couple times in the article, it might be sort of less important to link it because that's probably not something that most it's not it's not a concept that's really tied with with what the article is about. So. Um, I think this is a good example of how there are there are guidelines around this stuff. So what uh, everything that Ben was just saying uh, comes from the manual of style, uh, as far as linking the first time in the article and then not and then link, and the first time in a section, but then not after it. Uh, but there's also uh, there's also judgment involved in it. So if you those those rules in the manual of style, some of them are really not meant to be hard and fast rules, but just general guidelines that um, that give you sort of a, a starting point. And Pete, could you um, on the screen go to uh, uh, Wikipedia, the page on the manual style on linking, you can go to the shortcut WP colon overlink. Yeah, that gives basically the guideline we have on. Yep. So as you see, this is linking, this is going to a section within the manual of style, and the, so the, there's actually this whole section on linking, and this is going to cover, or this whole page on linking, and this is going to cover internal links and external links. But uh, the overlink section is specifically about. Uh, oh, I, I lost it here. <laughs> I'm, okay, I'm uh, trying to do things with one hand here as I hold my microphone in a good. <laughs> Good position, and it's not working so well. Um, yeah, so this is this is a good resource for this. Um, and Christine, I think, or someone was it? Christine just mentioned the article on open education would be a, a prime candidate to link into, and, and the OER policy. So these are excellent suggestions. And again, I would uh, encourage anyone who feels so inclined to uh, to start adding some links in even during the call um, if you if you feel that linking to open educational practices would be useful in these articles um, these are these are these are great things to do like as you're working on your own article it's it's um, or on your final project article I think it's always a good idea to um, to to keep active on some other and do little edits to other articles along the way um, and add those articles to your your watch list to see if other people have responses to what you're doing. So I would I really encourage you to um, to take on some of these things as we go along. And then also be sure to um, mention the fact that you've gone to the effort to make sure that it is interlinked when you are applying for your badge. Very good point. So, Clem, is there anything else you'd like to look at on the OEP article before we move on? I've, you've, you've done a lot of good work there, so um, I'd really be interested to hear any. Or if you just want to tell us, you know, talk us through your thinking process as you've been expanding it a bit, that would be really interesting as well. Uh, 
Oh, and I see, Clem, I'm, I'm noticing your earlier comment that you feel like it should be easier to link back when there's more content on the OEP page. Uh, I'd really encourage you not to worry about that too much. Um, there's actually even, um, I don't know that we've covered this very much, but one of the very common ways in which Wikipedia grows, and this has sort of become less the case as it's gotten more complete, but is just to include a red link to an article that doesn't even exist yet. It's, so um, I'm going to just hit edit to, um, to demonstrate this really quick. Let's just suppose that, uh, you know, maybe professional and individual level was a, is a, I'm just making this up, but let's suppose that that's a concept that we feel is notable and should have a Wikipedia article, even though it doesn't yet. Uh, it would be, as long as we're pretty confident that it, that it has notability, uh, it would be fine for us to just add brackets around that, and I'll show a preview of what that would look like. It would just come up as a red link in the article, as you see down here, and that's considered a, a perfectly normal way for Wikipedia to grow. So it, it may be not particularly useful to the reader when they see that. They're going to see the link and they're going to click on it, and they're going to get a notice that says there is no Wikipedia article about this yet. But at the same time, that's a reminder to the reader that Wikipedia is something that they can work to build as well. Um, and it gives them a bit of, uh, a bit of insight into that process. So I really think it's, it's fine to, certainly there is useful information on the OEP page, especially after the, the content that you've added. And I wouldn't really worry too much about it not being complete um, because it's, it's still going to be useful. It's going to be useful in an, even in its incomplete state. Uh, and actually, another thing, um, <laughs> a grain of sand in the oyster, I like that analogy, um, soon, soon to become pearls. Uh, one, one other thing, that, uh, Clem, is that uh, this, this uh, merge discussion, this other tag up near the top, is something that we've, uh, I actually left the note on the talk page quite a while ago that said, uh, I don't think that we should merge it. I think that this should be a separate article. And I noticed that uh, V. Taylor, who's in our class, and also you have commented that you agree with that. I think you should feel perfectly free to just remove that merge tag. Uh, this was It was proposed to merge the article over a year ago. And even the, per the person who suggested merging it didn't even put anything on the talk page. You see this discuss link is a red link. So when you suggest that something should be merged, you're really supposed to explain why you think that's a good idea. And if nobody's even bothered to explain why they think it should be merged in, um, there's really no reason why this banner should be distracting everyone who looks at the article when the people who have discussed it all seem to be in agreement. So. I think that's another thing. I think you could just go in and, and remove that. I would say in your edit summary, um, I would say remove per, just per consensus on talk page. And of course, this is something I could do myself, but you know, I, try to, I try to point things like this out because there's no reason that, that you guys shouldn't do it as you're, um, as you're coming along in your understanding of how Wikipedia fits together. Good, good point, Ben. The general notability guideline is uh, as you've added new references to the article, that goes a long way towards addressing that. So even though uh, we may have had some agreement that it met that guideline before, now that we have more references, it's an even stronger case. So I, I totally agree that, you know, really all of these tags besides the orphan one could probably just be removed right now, uh, and the orphan tag um, could easily be removed if, if we add it to one or two more articles. Okay. Um, so let's see, who else has joined us here? Let's, let's move on and look at another article someone's been working on. Uh, welcome Molly and Trish. Molly, I don't think I saw you come in. Um, is there anything you'd like to discuss about your articles? Pete, can I talk? Please do. Oh, good. Um, if you would look at the fat 
Wikipedia page. I have a question for you. Uh, which page? Set P H E T. That's the article oh, Kathy yeah. DeSalle and I are working yeah, on. Sorry, yeah. is this, is this fresh? Oh, it is. Yeah. Okay. I'm pulling it up right now. Okay. Thanks. Oops. Did I? Oh, I typoed that. Uh oh. That interactive simulations. There we go. So take it away. Okay. So um, if you scroll down to um, teaching ideas, I think that's what it's called. Yeah. So I just started this. Uh, yeah, don't scroll too far there. It's right up top now. So please, so our teacher a little bossy. <laughs> Uh, so when I added that, um, Kathy felt like uh, because all the references were back to the FET page, it seemed uh, a little self-serving. And so she wanted me to look for other places that talked about the activities. So like I found a link in Merlot. But I just wanted to kind of ask about the culture here. Um, you know, since we were talking about OER and linking, I, I obviously need to add OER link in the Creative Commons. I haven't linked those yet. But do you feel like, uh, how do you feel about that? Do you feel like it's too self-serving to link back to the vet page? I don't hear you. Molly, I'll jump in just on the off chance that um, he's having audio difficulties. Oh, okay. um, I, I actually did. I, oh, I just forgot go. to turn my okay. talk back on, but what I was trying to say was actually that you or Ben should take this question anyway, so please take it away, Christine. Oh, good. Um, well, I was just going to mimic something Ben said earlier, maybe right before you came on the call, which is, um, uh, if there is a link to uh, this external resource elsewhere on the page or earlier in the page, um, then I, I suspect it it might be viewed as superfluous. But if there is not, um, then um, I, I I don't think there would be a, a problem. But I, I would invite a second opinion. Yeah, I'll jump in here as well. Um, yeah. Traditionally, in the uh, body of articles, we don't do a whole lot of linking to external sources, mainly just internal sources. That's not to say necessarily that if there's an applicable external source, such as the FET page, um, as I'm reading here, yeah, that does appear in context like it um, would possibly be useful to a reader. But one option you would have, rather than including the link in parentheses, would be to link to the four teachers page and have the four teachers page be the hyperlink text. You would click and go to another page. And um, if you don't know how to do that, I could help with that. OK, that, that was uh, one of the things I had thought of originally for teachers um, should be the text. Yeah. So but, I, 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 have, I have some questions about internal linking, so I'll, yeah. I'll take that as good advice. Merlot is an organization that had a little, but just it was just like one sentence. Um, they had about us, uh, and there was, I mean, there was three paragraphs about us, but one sentence was about the activities. So I didn't feel like it was a very strong link. I, I'll put the link up here. I'll put it in the talk. OK. Uh, so I want to address uh, your, your question about this sec section as well. Uh, because I think what you were asking um, is, really, is really mainly about whether it even makes sense to have a section like that if, there's not, if there are not external sources mentioning teaching ideas uh, about how to use that. Um, and I think, that's, I think that's a good question. And I think that 
Um, mm -hmm. my, my inclination is actually is is no. Um, is that the, if the purpose of Wikipedia is to summarize what has been published in independent, reliable sources, um, then this is really straying fairly far from that by being its own section. And I, th I think that the um, I know Christine has brought up in the past the uh, the page what Wikipedia is not, um, which is a really useful page to. To read right. through, and I, so this is kind of what pops, is, pops yeah. into my head about this is that the purpose of Wikipedia is not really to be like a how-to guide or a you know I mean a cookbook is an example of something that I, I think there's a section Wikipedia is not a cookbook. So while it's certainly a useful thing in the world mm -hmm. to suggest how teachers might use that, um, I think it's I think it's sort of outside of the scope of what Wikipedia is intended to be, and my inclination would be not to include a section like that. Yeah. I, okay. Well, there are. Um, yeah. Here's I saw I see somebody added a, another nice page for us. Um, so the CERC portal that um, somebody added to the talk there. Uh, let me see who Ben added it. Um, I had that that CERC page. Um, is uh, I guess organized by a person who used to work for FET. Okay. Sam McKagan, if, if anybody went to that link. And so that was kind of another question. Um, you know, this search page is a totally different project, but if anyone were to deep it, you know, Sam McKagan was at one time part of FET. So I didn't know if this was a, that particular reference seemed to me um, like not a good one. Is, is that am I feeling that right? Well, I, you know, I would say yes and no. I would say that you're you're right. It's a little bit of a gray area, but it seems mm -hmm. significant to me. And I'm I'm looking at this for the first time, so you know, I would probably want to read read it through and think it through before giving a really definitive answer. But um, to me, the fact that he is working for a different organization. I don't know if is he working for this for pedagogy in action? Uh, or is Sam a, Sam is the uh, that Sam is that group. Okay. So, I mean, uh, or she works, that yeah, you know, she that, works for that group now. She does not she didn't work for us. Right. Yeah. So that to me indicates that, you know, there's that that organization has by hiring her has expressed um, you know, sort of has sort of validated her expertise in the field. In a way that's at least somewhat independent of that, and that she okay. knows something about that and chose to publish it there. I mean, to me, that is it's somewhat independent. It may not be as sort of pristinely independent as it could be, but I sure wouldn't I sure wouldn't argue with a link for that, especially if it were being used in a way that um, you know that's not adding something really controversial to the article or something like that. Okay. That was kind of, I was looking for references and I found plenty, but I was just trying to decide like how you decide which references are good. I see yeah. somebody has compadre up here too. I if I can interject for just a second here, I was just going to mention, I just happened to Google that teaching idea, and I think there definitely is enough coverage to warrant a section on that. The, the key is just going to be to link it to sources other than the uh, non-independent source from FET. And in regards to linking the article that was written by a former member of the FET team, which I think is what I gathered from that, I don't think there right. would necessarily be any problem doing so. I mean, for better or for worse, most people reading the article aren't going to dive that deeply. But, I mean, obviously that's not a reason you want to do something, but alter alternately, unless you're adding something that's really unambiguously promotional, regarding something he said and citing it to him, I, or to her, I believe you said. Um, right. I don't see it. Like uh, the, the compadre article that Ben um, also put up, you'll see that um, I'm one of the authors. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's me, Trish Lowline. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I didn't feel like that was a good one. Mm -hmm. Is that... So what I, I usually I mean, do... Am I having I, the I right feeling in, there? Yeah. I've, I've run into that a couple of times where I've wanted to cite a blog post that I wrote or something. And what I usually do is I, I would explicitly make a comment on the top. I would, I would first, I would really try to think through and put myself in as neutral a, a frame of mind about it as possible. 
um, you know, just mm -hmm. sort of in my own head, try to try to make sure that I'm really putting it in, a, that I'm not giving it sort of special treatment just because it's my article. And then I would also explicitly make a note on the talk page at that time. So, I, you know, I know Cassie made this disclaimer when she started the article, which is excellent. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, I think for something like that, I, I think that would warrant just making a new section and saying, hey, I just, I cited this article that I wrote. I think that this is worthwhile and expands the article and is going to be useful to the reader, but I thought I'd flag it in case anyone you know, thinks that I'm being okay. promotional. Okay, because those, those are, it's interesting that Ben found those because those are the three I found um, yeah. when Kathy said she thought the paragraph needed more uh, external references. I wrote it like 8.30 last night, so <laughs> I hadn't really, just, I, I just slapped it up there <laughs> for her okay. to beat on. <laughs> and you guys at lab tonight. <laughs> Yeah, it also seems like, um, as a reader, what I would ex what what I would want to find in that section is I put my place myself in the place of a teacher, and I don't necessarily want to find the for teachers at FET information, but I want to see what other teachers have done with FET. So if you could find yes, some online examples, in, uh, yeah, of yeah. of that's what lesson plans that David. have been acted upon, that would be ideal, I think. Yeah, the database is not just article, uh, not just activities we've written. There, um, it's an open source community of teachers who share um, articles or activities, and so uh, maybe I need to explain that as well. That that the teaching ideas yeah. are, are yeah, contributed by be, by a lot of people. Yeah, that would seem to be a concept that should be in this section. I don't remember from, it's been a week or so since I read it, um, whether that's explicitly stated in here, but I, I would think that you could work that into. I could work it into that section. Section as well. That's um, sort of just about our educational research. Yeah, okay. So, so maybe I'll change the title from teaching ideas to how to, um, how do teachers use that or something? I, sure. I don't know. I'll yeah. come up with something more friendly. Okay. Okay. Well, I wanted to put that up for there for tonight so you guys could give me some good ideas. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Thank you. Thank you. So, it's uh, kind of a related question. Okay. But I, I don't want to um, interject myself into your priority flow either. No, please do. Okay. Um, well, um, my question is, Pete, is is um, probably something that um, might benefit others in the class as well, which is on the OER article. I want to um, I want to cite um, Stephen Downs in, in a YouTube video, and YouTube pre presents some interesting challenges. Of course, you can cite it just as a um, as a website. Um, but I specifically have gone through and I've actually transcribed that interview and I'll put a link in here for you. Okay. Um, I've transcribed it into into my blog because the transcription at YouTube is terrible. Yeah. <laughs> and and this blog entry is nothing but the transcription. I haven't editorialized at all in it. And so I'm wondering, you know, if 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 that's okay or if it's better to just point at the YouTube article? Well, um, I, so in, in, in direct answer, I, I want to comment on sort of the, the, the general concept, but, but first just in direct answer to your question, um, I would probably link this with the, because this page has the transcription, the much better transcription, and it also has the YouTube video. So if, you know, if someone's looking for the video or the text, uh, they're going to find the same thing, or, or they're 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 going to find whichever one they want uh, just by coming to this one page. So that would be my inclination. But before we get to that, um, is is the question of whether this is a reliable source or not? And in that sense, uh, YouTube and any any site that permits anyone to upload stuff uh, requires some extra thought about how it fits in as a as a reliable source because YouTube is obviously not a publisher in the sense that like the New York Times is a publisher or there's there's not there's not a process whereby multiple people um, with established reputations are determining 
that something is worthy of publication. This is just th that this person decided to upload this video. So it could be, I, I don't know what this video is. If he, if this was a, a conference that went through, or a, a, a talk that went through an application process at a conference, then that is certainly uh, the kind of vetting that will make it a more reliable source. But it's not going to, I guess the point I'm trying to make is that it doesn't derive its authority from YouTube. So it needs to derive its authority as a reliable source from something else. Um, and that should ideally be expressed in the way that you cite it. So I haven't, let me see if you've already put this in here. I, I have not put it in there yet, okay. no. So if you did, I would, I would want to, I would want to see a citation that says, you know, it might link to YouTube, but in terms of how the, um, the citation is listed, I would want it to say something like, you know, proceedings of the such and such conference, you know, from whatever year. And maybe also has a link to that conference's mm -hmm. entry that demonstrates that he, you know, that he delivered it there, in addition to having a link to the video itself. Right, that was the first thing I went to look for, and unfortunately the, um, the university that sponsored the conference no longer has, um, has an archive to link to it, but I, I could still cite the conference as the source right. of the citation. Right, yeah, even if there's no link to the conference, if it was part of a, part of a peer-reviewed conference, then certainly that would be an important consideration, and you could mention it in the, in the citation even though there's not a link. Uh, and I see uh, Ben has put in a link to the resource page on this specific question too, so that's uh, that'd be a good thing to look at as well. So, uh, Cami and Molly, I don't think we've heard from you. Uh, have either of you been working on an article you'd like to share with us? Okay, so Molly, you've been having some issues with sources. Can you tell us a little more about that? Do you want to uh, put a link in the chat window so we can pull up your article? Oh, yes, right. I remember looking at this. Okay, so you've been working, you've been really expanding this biography quite a lot, if I remember right. Um, seem to remember a whole lot of edits. Yes. You're doing a lot of work on that. So, um, so you're having trouble finding a variety of sources. Yes, I remember seeing, um, that there was a that someone gave you some feedback that the sources are too heavily based on the museum, uh, and let's see, is that on the articles talk page or no? It's not. Is it on your talk page? I don't remember. Oh, maybe this is on the class talk page. So. Um, I, you know, I, my impression, wherever I saw that comment, my impression was that it was maybe uh, a little bit overstated. Uh, not that it's, it's certainly an important consideration, but um, but that, and, and this is without having looked through, looked through the sources in detail, but it seems to me that even if they are um, published by the museum, if they're if they're if they're if they're in any sense like compiled from other sources and it just happens to be that the museum has has republished them, uh, that there may be ways in which there's some authority that's conveyed from other um, publishers or other experts in the field than the museum itself that just isn't very visible. So I don't I don't know whether that's the case or not, but I would I would think about it in terms of that. Um, but why don't you tell us a little bit, Molly? And if you want to use your microphone, please feel free to just uh, hit the talk button. Uh, we're fine with the chat window as well, but um, it's nice to have a conversation when we have the chance. Um, but uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about 
how you have gone about looking for sources, and maybe we can think through that together. There's um, one thing I would I, I want to point out. I don't know if any of these are available, and I actually think that they may not be. Um, but there are, there are a few online databases that generally require a paid subscription to log into. Uh, Credo Reference is one of them, and uh, Highbeam is another, where it may be possible to. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Hi. Hi. Um, so my problem is is that um, the guy I'm writing the article about, he was the first director of the ROM. So yep. all of the resources would relate back to the ROM because that's where all the info is. Yeah. So even when I try to find off-site material, it still relates back. Mm -hmm. So when you say it relates back, um, what is, does that mean? Like, is the the museum the publisher of these? So we ha you have five sources in here. Yes, the museum of of every single one. Um, of except he's not. No, he's not. The museum is not the publisher of the second source. Yeah. Um, but everything else, the museum was. Okay. So. Um, what I would probably look for, let's see, what's what's the era that he was active? So, so he died in 1957. Um, I would probably look for news sources um, that talk about the establishment of a museum and his role in that, because I'll bet, and, and it, it can be a little tricky to look for old newspapers, but there are lots of places to find them online. So, I mean, I, my first step would probably be to just take his name and put it into uh, Google News Archives, so news. Google News. Um, and if you, this is actually something I'm gonna. I want to walk through this because if you haven't done this before, uh, this is a really useful trick. So putting things in quotes is a is a good way to make sure you really get the exact name. And then also, um, once you do it, it may look like nothing is coming up, but that's because by default. Google News searches mm -hmm. only look for recent stuff. So you want to click on Search Tools. And where it says Anytime, you want to click on Archives. And all of a sudden, a lot more stuff is coming up. So here's one from 1957. So sometimes, so sometimes you'll get this great format where the entire newspaper is scanned, and it jumps you right to the article. And you can, I'm not going to try to scroll around here, because I don't think it's going to work well through Blackboard Collaborate. But um, as you can see over on the right, it shows you the whole newspaper page, but then it highlights the specific article. Um, also, sometimes through you. Google News, I'm sorry? Thank you. That's really helpful. Good. OK. Uh, as long as we're here, let me just point out a few other things, though. So sometimes it's not going to be as easy as that. So here's one. Uh, this one, I, I see it says pay per view right at the top here. So if I click on it, it's going to take me just to a resource page for that article. So it'll give me the first couple of paragraphs. But it's this service, uh, the star.com, it's through PQ Archiver, which is a paid service. So you could either, you know, if, if this is something you were really interested in and didn't have any other way to get to it, you could just click on that and buy the article uh, or buy, uh, buy access to that site. Um, but you also could use this as, uh, you know, you may find that you're uh, library has a subscription to that. Maybe you can log in at your local library. Uh, you know, maybe you can use this as a as a way to sort of triangulate in and find that. It may exist somewhere else free on the web. So now that you know some information about it, sometimes just you can copy and paste some uh, some of the text from the headline and do another Google search, and you might find that it's archived for free somewhere else. Um, you don't have to buy the article to cite it. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So if the if the information that you're looking for is in those first couple of paragraphs, then you could certainly just just cite it without doing anything. I guess I was assuming that you know if it's a longer article and you're looking for more information, you might need to um, you might need to track it down somehow. 
But then another uh, another trick that I like to use is that most public libraries will have a um, will subscribe to a service like Credo Reference or like Newsbank. So um, let's see if this. So my library. Uh, well, I have. Uh, I still have a Multnomah County Library um, account, which is uh, from when I used to live in Portland. Um, and if you go to their website and go under the research section, there's this link to research tools. And then within here, uh, I would look for so Newsbank is um, is usually the best service for this. So Newsbank America's newspapers. Click on that and then begin using this resource, and it's going to take me to a login page. So I'm going to need to enter my um, my library card number and my password. So if you don't know what that is, you might need to work it out with your library and figure out your password. Uh, but then that would take me to a page where I could browse a whole lot of newspapers. Now, my library in Oregon is probably not going to subscribe to this Ontario newspaper. They typically subscribe to, um, I don't know, a Maybe maybe five or ten national newspapers like the Washington Post and the New York Times and the LA Times, and then a number of Oregon papers. But they probably wouldn't have a smaller local paper from somewhere else in the country. So you'll find that it's useful in some cases and not in others. But as you're as you're exploring topics like this, you'll probably find that you're really learning a whole lot about uh, different ways to to do research online, online and offline. Pete, I punched in a, a link to um, Ingram on on this okay. topic and got some results. That's really fun. Great. Yes, this is excellent. This is a this is a really fun tool. I always forget about this. So this is uh, this is analyzing book mentions, and as you can see, he was mentioned a, a, a whole bunch uh, in the early 1900s, and then there was another little surge here in. The 19, in 1988, that's kind of interesting, um, considering he died in 57. So I wonder what the there was probably for some reason his work was uh, was getting a fresh look in the 80s. And then you can uh, click on the the links in the bottom where it shows the dates, and it will pull up the results in Google Books that that these uh, mentions correspond to. So let's see, how does that work? Oh, I see these links down at the bottom. So if we click on this, oh, that's interesting. I never noticed that. So yeah, so Google Books, just doing a search within Google Books can be really useful as well. Um, and that would be even a more direct way to get to this, which will often pull things up that don't show up in a regular Google search. And for most of these, if the book is under copyright, so so this one is from 1906. So if we click here, we're probably going to see the full Text of the book. We'll be able to scroll through the whole thing. Uh, we'll be able to click on the ebook if you want the text version of it, where you can search for search through the text. Um, but then for a more recent book um, that's under copyright, I'm just going to look through for an example here. Uh, so here's one from 1984. Google has scanned this and can pull it up in a search so they can find that his name is mentioned in the book. But you can't actually read the entire book online. You have to, they they want you to buy the ebook, or you could now that you know that the book exists, you might be able to find it in your library. But you'll see notes like this: pages 189 to 190 are not shown in this preview. So you, they give you snippets of the book, but not the entire thing. But yes, again, as Ben says, you can still cite it uh, if the if the part that you need did come up in the preview. You of course don't have to find the original book at all. You can just cite it directly from that. So we've come to the end of our hour. Uh, Cami, uh, we haven't heard anything from you, so if uh, I have a few extra minutes if you'd like to jump in. Um, but if not, I look forward to continuing to work with everyone online, and, uh, and let's just stay active on the talk page. It's really exciting to me to see all the, all the questions you guys are coming up with and all the, all the work you're doing. It's, um, it's such a great variety of articles you've chosen, and you're you're all doing good stuff. 
All right. Well, thanks for coming, and I will see you all again at our final class on Tuesday. And uh, as I mentioned last time, we will also have a lab session after class uh, at the usual time next week. Uh, so if you find that you haven't completed your article by the final class, don't worry about it. Uh, we'll have another chance for questions and discussion in the last session. So I'm going to end the recording, and we'll see you on Tuesday. Oh, and thanks again, Ben and Christine, for jumping in. You've been really helpful.